Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are or wherever you're watching this. Wanted to thank you for joining us today. As indicated, we want to talk a little bit about ChatGPT, but we're going to expand the topic into other AI tools as well. My name is Mervyn Chapman. This is what I do for a living, right? I talk, I talk technical topics. I work with customers as a consultant. So before we get into the presentation, before we get into things, again, just wanted to welcome you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Uh, uh, Saba has been very good to go ahead and set this up uh, within StreamYard. So go ahead and put your comments in the into the comment section. Uh, put your name as well. StreamYard does, just goes ahead and says it's Facebook user. If you want me to interact with you uh, particularly and to call your name, go ahead and put your name, Samuel, Chanel, um, you know, or Darnisha, put your name in the comment and that way I can address you. I promise I won't ignore any comments from you, Samuel, but you know, we'll see. You need to behave yourself. So what we want to discuss today is chat GPT. I know we've all heard about it. Some of you have used it a little bit. Some of you have used it a lot. Maybe this will help reinforce some of the things that you already know and that you're learning. But I want to cover some of the use cases, some of the ways that I have used ChatGPT, some things that I've learned from others. And if at any time you have any questions, I said, put them into the, the comment section. Uh, even after the presentation, reach out to me. You know how to reach me. If you have questions about it, if you need presentations for a class or things like that, reach out. I'm here to help and I want to make you successful with this. So jumping into the presentation. We'll move past my face here for a bit into slide two, right? Let's cover what is ChatGPT and what is not, what ChatGPT is not. So ChatGPT is what we call, the GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, right? All it is, is it's a chat bot that generates responses based on previous training of input of different books and websites and things of that nature. It is not Skynet, right? I know we, we joke about it and how it's gonna take over the world. All they've done is take millions and millions of web pages, probably even billions, right? Of different web pages and books and different output. And they've used them to train this computer model to see what a valid human response should look like. And so when you go into chat GPT, it responds to you as a human would based on the training that it has received. So it's not machine learning is a little bit different. It's a term that you will have heard. Machine learning is, for example, your, your the thermostat in your house that wakes up. You wake up every morning and at six or six thirty, you turn the temperature up, down or up. You adjust the temperature. You do certain things. After a while, your thermostat, if it's so equipped, will learn what time you wake up. It will learn what temperatures you like. It will eventually learn that on Sunday, you wake up a little bit later than other days and to adjust the temperature at different times. So I have a thermostat that does that. AI takes it a lot further, right? And then says, here are the actions that I should take. It includes a lot more input and it is designed to answer questions that were not originally trained into the, the model. That's the important distinction. Machine learning makes choices based on the things that were put into it. AI makes choices based on things that were not originally programmed. It can make inferences and do those things appropriately, right? Open AI is the view that AI technology should be available for as many people as possible. So as I'll show you later, there are hundreds and thousands of tools that have been developed using the OpenAI framework. Some of them are free and some of them, you know, people have taken their time and their money to develop other software that has built upon that OpenAI framework. Uh, generative AI is just an umbrella term, right? For AI that can generate text, not just text, right? With, with ChatGPT, but generate audio as well. We can generate, um, uh, you know, songs, full songs, uh, drum tracks, background music. Uh, they can even generate speech. You can type in a speech and it can read the speech in a particular voice. Writing, I've, if I've asked it, you know, we, we've heard lots about people using uh, AI to generate papers. You can do that as well. Generate a three chapter paper for me on nursing skills, right? And it will write that for you. 
and as well images. Very, very good at generating unique images based on the training that it has done before. And then large language model, right? Specific algorithms that predict and create text. The important part is predicting text. So as I'll show later, I can say, create an outline of a sermon based on Billy Graham's speech patterns, right? And it knows it has read every sermon produced by Billy Graham, and it can then sit down and put together a topic, a sermon based on a specific topic. If you're paying attention, you'll notice that there are some ethical implications to that, and we'll cover those as well a little bit later. So it is one tool. ChatGPT is a single tool. It's not sentient, right? It doesn't think. It is really just autocomplete on steroids. But even so, you can use it to do lots and lots of different things. They're not search engines, and they can be wrong, right? There's a case recently where a lawyer uh, decided to use ChatGPT to generate some information for a case, and he did so, you know, without checking, and it produced citations for him, and the judge caught him, um, you know, that and all of the citations were wrong. Right, chat GPT can make things up and we call those things hallucinations. So we wanna be careful how we use it and how we generate it. I, I wanna to respond to a question, uh, Grace Lynn, thank you. Which do I think is better, Pictory or InVideo? I am not familiar with either one of those tools but I'm happy to check on them. Those are not tools that I've, I'm familiar with. Um, if you can't put in the chat what you use either Pictory or InVideo for, I can address that later on in the conversation. And there's a comment as well that plagiarism checker is necessary. Absolutely true, right? There are uh, utilities that allow, as some of you may know, I am in school at the moment. There are utilities that the, the teachers can use to check if a paper was done using chat GPT, right? There's certain patterns of writing that can detect if AI generated a paper. Similarly, because AI is trained on this, this corpus, this group of material, there are times when a particular string of text can be found pulled directly from, let's say, again, using the example of Billy Graham's sermon. So we want to be sure, right, if you're using something that you need to cite, you go ahead and cite that particular statement, right? If you're using chat GPT or another AI generator to generate a paper, make sure that you're not plagiarizing something, right? At some levels of education, that's not really important. At some, if you're in college, if you're, you know, your master's or further degrees, it is critical that you check for plagiarism, um, if, that you check for plagiarism before you go ahead and submit that paper, right? If you did not, the, the rule is in academia, if you didn't write it, you need to cite it, right? And some of you may be, be familiar with that. So some popular AI tools so far, and again, we'll go, we'll go through a couple of these websites, right? ChatGPT, obviously. ChatPDF is one that I'll cover as well for some of the attorneys on here or for people. Uh, <laughs> I saw the comment, someone preaching an AI sermon. It, it probably will happen. Uh, so the ChatPDF is great. For example, last week I had to analyze a, a request for proposal document. It was 131 pages and I had a very short time to do it. I simply uploaded the document into chat PDF and then started asking the document questions. Now, what do you mean by asking questions? I started saying, what are my rights to sever this contract? And it says, here are the rights to sever the contract according to section 53. It tells me exactly what's needed. I said, cut through all of the fluff. Tell me, what are my rights for this? What are the things that I need to do? And it finds it within that 131 pages and responds to me in a conversational style. Again, very, very popular, very, very powerful set of tools. Uh, if you're not familiar with, with Bing, Bing is Microsoft search engine. You can ask Bing questions like, help me prepare a meal plan for you know six people. Three of them are vegetarian and I need to keep it under $30, you know, or $30 per plate. And it will allow you to then put, put together recipes and pull that together. So again, have fun with this, get it, get in there, try it, use it. Google Bard is just Google's version of it. And some of these are still in the research phase. Uh, for pictures, right, Mid Journey, Adobe and Canva. So Adobe is a well, you know, known and expensive product 
they have incorporated AI into their products to allow you to do all sorts of things, change the background. If you have a picture that's small, it can expand the picture and the rest of the picture, the border is AI generated and it looks like a completely seamless picture. So, I mean, very, very powerful things. And then audio and video, right? Synthesis and Ava and Soundful can be used to produce background music. And again, this is just touching the surface of the things that AI can do. Take a look at these two sites, and I'm, I'll, have, I'll be happy to share these afterwards, Futurepedia and AIToolsDirectory.com. And you can take a look through and make sure that, you know, just see here are the free tools that it can be used to generate music. I want this type of music. I'd like this type of video. I'd like to auto-generate a presentation. I'd like to do this. And all of those tools are then listed within these websites. Uh, I'll take a moment now to just go and take a look at the comments. Okay, so someone says they're using them to build a new YouTube automation channel. Okay, awesome, good stuff. Someone's gonna produce or pre preach an AI sermon. I don't doubt that it has already happened. Um, and you'd like to have AI build the opening sentences for court. Uh, there's a smiley face at the end of that. I think it can be done, to be honest with you. And maybe that's something that we try, uh, you know, when we go into the into the demonstration. So, okay. And so this is going to be my last slide. I'll go ahead and transfer to my other screen, and we'll show you. This is where I really want to spend the bulk of the time, is showing you what. AI can do what chat GPT can do and he helped probably <clears throat> producing some some thoughts that you can do and expand upon before we do that right I wanted to show you a snippet of this website here AI tools directory which is the one that that we just spoke about as you can see right it takes you through all of these AI tools and again these are tools that people develop using the open AI framework and other frameworks some of them are paid some of them are freemium, which means they give you some free services and then charge you for the more professional type services, right? These services can generate art, can generate video, can generate, uh, you know, ad, uh, listing optimization, SEO, uh, productivity, copywriting. I mean, again, there's a, a, a huge list of things that can be done. And Futurepedia, this is one that I really like because it allows me to, to scroll through, to filter for all of the tools. So there are 4,094 tools in here. And from creating a you know, Twitter thread to you know, helping you uh, generate uh, AI to redesign your room, again, anything that you can think of, it's all in here. And this one is free. So if someone wants to use, uh, if someone wants to use this to, to help design their home, it's free, again. And so using AI to do that. Uh, per personalization engines for e-commerce and hospital, hospitality, just you name it, all of those are there. Um, and the one that I like, because I like listening to music, right? This one's a little bit more recreational. Songs like X, right? If you have a Spotify account and you want to find a song, um, that's like, I just say Kanye West, can't tell me nothing. And then it finds all of the songs that are like that song and lists them here and allows you to create a playlist within Spotify. So it can tell the characteristics of the song, songs that are similar to this. And again, this was an AI tool that someone built. The possibilities are pretty much endless. All right. So someone put into the uh, into the chat, someone's going to preach one. Please invite me to that sermon. I would like to hear that. Um, I would really like to hear that AI preach sermon. Uh, this here is the, the RFP that I, that I spoke about, and the website was chatpdf.com. And here are the questions, essentially, that I was asking the document, right? Here's the state of Michigan procurement document, right? It's 114 pages, so I'm sorry, it's a little bit off on the page count. But I said, what are my rights to sever, right? If I ask a question that it can't answer, and I'll zoom in on this a bit to make it a little easier to read, it just says, hey, your question is too broad and unclear. Could you please provide more context? 
As you can see, it responds to me in a conversational format. And I can simply just ask questions and have it answer them. Instead of me going through 114 pages, you know, somebody says, Mervin, I need you to get back to me in an hour with information on this. There's no way I can read this, right? But this uh, uploads it. I can, you know, in PDF format, and I can ask the questions and have them answered. Thank you, Saba, for putting that in the chat. Okay, so let's jump into this demo. And I am going to have a document here that I am using to guide myself. So just bear with me for a second. Okay, so speaking of sermons, I approached the chat GPT interface, right? ChatGPT.OpenAI.com. And we'll share this as well. And all I have to do is to talk to it as I would a person. Help me build a sermon well, for Men's Day. And it responds. Here's a title. And is an introduction, and it starts to type that information out. So we're not going to go through every bit of text in here, but as you can see, it builds three sections and a conclusion. And the topic is on embracing authentic masculinity, right? A call to men on men's day. So it goes through the you know, process of building an outline, and I don't recommend you just use this, the sermon as it is. Hear that, Samuel? Don't use the sermon. But if I want to now include, right, the, the beauty of this interface is that I can now respond with this in mind and say to it, I'd like to include a reference, right, today, to one man from history like Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And I'll just copy and paste this so I don't mess that up. And it will retype the sermon for me. And it will include a reference to Dietrich Bonhoeffer within the sermon. So it, it understands what I'm still trying to do, but now adds it to the overall text. ChatGPT has a cutoff in all of the data that it has inherited. That cutoff is 2021. So it knows pretty much all it can know about the world until 2021, including things about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So if I were to then say, pick two appropriate songs from the latest Seventh-day Adventist hymnal, and I'll just copy and paste that, it will do its best to do so. Now, I haven't told it anything about the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal. It remembers that I'm talking about Men's Day, and it knows that there are different versions of the hymnal. Right, I didn't have to teach it that, but it knows. And so it says, lead on, O King Eternal, and rise up, O men of God. So if I want to go even further and said, create a typical order of service for a Seventh-day Adventist church in table format. and it builds out the order of service for me. So again, one of the comments I know that Bard goes back, goes beyond 2021, and that is true. ChatGPT also did go beyond 2021 at one point. It would allow web browsing and would catch up. 
that feature was turned off as of last week, and Bards may be as well, because it started uh, basically violating paywalls. So you would go to the New York Times, and you know sometimes somebody would share an article on New York Times, and you'd have to get past a paywall. Well, they were finding that these search engines were allowing people to get past these paywalls without paying. So some of the web searching and updated features have been turned off. But it's a good point, and thank you for including that. Uh, Saba asks, do we know how far back the data that is used for chat GPT goes? So they're continuing to add to it. So it will go as far back as there is recorded data on the internet. Keep in mind that there is, a, there is an emphasis on data from the last 50 to 75 years, right? But if you ask, again, a, a question about an event that happened 300 years ago, but that is recorded in a recent document, it will be included within the chat GPT. Uh, uh, the, within the chat GPT responses. Uh, somebody's screen just froze. Please see if you can get back in. Uh, so somebody asked, wait, why am I just knowing about this? What, what exactly are you asking for? Go ahead and update that in the chat. I would love to, to see what it is that you're just learning about. Okay. So the if I say to myself now, you know, the Tuskegee singers are going to provide service, music for the service, include them in the program. It will say, right, if I if I add in, for example, there's no special music. Oh, there is special music here, right? Praise and worship, special music. If I say the Tuskegee singers are going to be presenting, it will add their name in, uh, find an appropriate uh, scripture selection and update the program. All right, let's do it that way. Psalms 27, 14 is now our scripture reading. Yep, wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. And if I want to change that scripture reading... I can do that. So as you can see, it is simply a conversational event. You're just having a conversation. It now changed the scripture to Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So again, I wouldn't use this as it is. As you know, you, you cannot replace a pastor. I want to be very clear. This does not replace good sermon writing. What it does is it helps you provide an outline for something that you can build yourself. And the same goes for writing papers. It helps you produce an outline that you can then use. It can produce just a basis for your study and uh, moving forward to, to get this done like this. Samuel Joseph. So why Samuel is saying why he's just knowing about this? Samuel, I'm happy to, 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 to sit down with you and help you with this. This is good stuff. I really, really enjoy doing this and just, just enjoy teaching people about this. So working through this interface here, every chat that you start with ChatGPT shows up in the sidebar. So notice here that I have different chats. And within each chat event, those questions are noted. I can't ask a question in my recipe chat that has to do with the embracing authentic masculinity chat, right? Those two are separate from each other. So if within this first chat, I tell it that the, assume the sky is blue or assume the sky is green, in recipes, if I ask it what the color of the sky is, it's going to tell me the sky is blue because that's what it knows. If I come back here, it will tell me, yes, the sky is green. You've told me the sky is green. So it's important that you use the individual chats. And as you go through, use the individual chats to do the things that you need to, especially if you're making certain assumptions about things. If in this chat, you're assuming that you're speaking to an Adventist church, then all of those references will be for an Adventist church. If in the second chat, you're assuming you're speaking at a Presbyterian church, the order of service, the, the songs, everything will be different. It will speak to that church. So that being said, 
let's start a new chat. And you, one of the most powerful features with this, uh, with chat GPT is you can tell it to act as a certain person. So let's say, I want you to act as an IT teacher, specializing in IT topics. You can't type today. And it's a little slow today. Of course, I'll be happy to assist. It's always happy to assist. So this one here, I will copy and paste. And this is useful, useful for teachers who are doing designing coursework. Design a course for me to learn about securely related topics. I want to learn about containers, and it must be in an easily understand format with test questions and a logical flow from simple to advanced topics. Right? Before ChatGPT, it would take me an hour to come up with this information. And I know the information scrolling by pretty quickly, but we'll go back up and we'll review some of it. So what it's done for me is produced a set of 10 modules. Let's scroll back up and please let me know if you can't see this. I won't go through this and it says, here's the course. Module one is this, and we wanna understand containers and their benefits. We'll wanna understand these different things. Here's module two. Here's module three, module four, all the way through module 10. And at the end of the assessment, there'll be a set of questions. You can also use ChatGPT to help generate the questions. You can also use it to help, it ge help you generate an answer key. Again, it knows all of these things. It can put them together. So if you, for example, want to learn about these and just produce a set of videos for yourself, said, hey, for each module, um, find a YouTube video. I can't spell. Or let's say for each topic. Find a find an appropriate YouTube video. less than 45 minutes long. And again, this is based on information up until 2021, but now for each module, there is a video. So there is no way that you can sit down and do this as quickly as ChatGPT. Right. So for whatever topic you want, whether it's car repair, whether it's information security, whether it's um, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. If there's a video on YouTube and if ChatGPT knows about it, it will put together a list of videos for you. Right. Any question. So the question is, does the app work as well as the online version? The answer is it depends. So I have an Apple device, feel free to boo me, right? An iPhone, iPhone does have a chat GPT app. The app is a little bit behind the website in terms of functionality. So the best functionality will be found on the website. Second best will be on your associated app, right? So whether the iOS chat GPT app or the associated Android app. So again, best functionality website, second best on, on your phone. I hope that answers your question. All right, if there are no other questions about producing the course material, let's start another chat. Let's create some new recipes. Right, it's gonna ask me what type of dishes or ingredients am I interested in? And let's pick on Mediterranean food today. 
So I'll copy and paste this and say, I love Mediterranean food, but want to try new recipes. Stick with typical ingredients, but with new combinations that focus on health, taste, and color. All right, let's see what it says. Okay, and now it starts coming out. Here are the things that you need. And even in, includes cooking instructions, right? Roasted beet and orange salad with minted yogurt dressing. I'm hoping it doesn't give me something with, uh, with raisins in it. No potato salad with raisins. That would immediately make me turn off my computer and throw it out the window. All right. So for those of you who may be on a diet plan, you may say to yourself, hey, I need to know what I can eat, but I'm on a budget for both from a calorie and from a, you know, uh, money perspective. So why don't we say, listen, I'm a college student. Right. I can only spend $10 per day on food. I'm just making up a number. Adjust, or let's say create a menu that includes two meals per day and fits I can't type. Sorry about that, folks. Fits my uh, fits my diet and budget. Certainly, I understand the importance of budget-friendly meals. Okay, so now it creates cheaper meals. Again, based on that Mediterranean diet, or as close as it can get to that diet, and notice it also lists prices. Okay, can you list the calorie count for each meal? And so it tells you, hey, total meal for breakfast, 252 calories, 372 to 412. And then here's a second meal, and here's the calorie listing. Okay. I mean, put in here what, what questions you want to ask. I have some, right? For example, uh, I've now graduated. I can't type. I really can't today from college. And my meal budget is now $60. Adjust my meal plan. I'm, I'm going to start blaming this keyboard. Congratulations on graduating, right? And now it's added avocados to my desert, <laughs> to my to my meal plan, right? And quinoa, and grilled vegetables, and spaghetti with marinara sauce, right? So it's upscaled my menu. Create a shopping list for me. and tells you what to do. All right, it seems like it is, okay, so this is the part I wanted to see, right? One of the options is garlic sauteed shrimp. So you can update it, right? I'm allergic to seafood. You don't even need to specify that it's shrimp. I'm allergic to seafood. And that's all I'm going to tell it. 
I apologize for including seafood. Here's an updated menu for you. And here's an updated shopping list. And it will remove all seafood. I mean, again, the power of this is pretty amazing. Uh, if I want to say add prices to this. Okay, so it says I don't have access to real-time pricing, but it will give you approximate prices for berries, for the wheat bread, for quinoa, for spaghetti, so forth and so on. So question in, do I think AI will take jobs away? How many people, how can people get ahead of that potential reality? I've struggled with this question. There are... <laughs> There are some jobs that will certainly be affected by this. I am not a prognosticator, but I already see how it's affecting my job. So my job requires me to put documents together. And so where we would take an associate consultant and they would take maybe three days to put together an, an outline of a document, right? It's part of a 180 page deliverable. Now we can do that in 30 minutes. What it's doing is it's forcing the lower skilled employees to level up in other ways because no more, no more will the majority of their time be spent in putting together basic templates like this. And so like when the car supplanted the horse and buggy, well, it took away horse and buggy driver jobs, but they had skills outside of just riding the horse and buggy. They knew how to navigate the city. And if they upgraded their skills, now they're drivers who also have the ability to navigate a city or a location. So will it take away some jobs? I absolutely think it will. Some of the, the, the lower skilled or more time consuming jobs the automation is going to go a long way towards taking those things away. Producing videos, for example, it is ridiculously easy now to take a voice, take, I can take as little as a three second sample of my voice and upload it to an AI site. And it can now in, you know, introduce my voice, use my voice for an entire video, right? I can create an avatar that looks like me and use that avatar in a training video. So the people who create training videos are going to have a hard time keeping up with the speed of these tools. I can produce in 30 minutes what used to take me days to produce, right? Having to record and re-record and adjust for lighting and, and doing all of the engineering on that video. I can now do that in 30 minutes and you know by putting down my credit card and paying 50 bucks. So some of these jobs will go away. And that that's, again, that's that's my prediction. It's going to require people to upskill and the people that know how to use AI are going to be at the front of that, right? They're going to be the best equipped to move past the wave of, of uh, job replacements. Why is Sam Joseph so hard on me? I don't know, but you know, we, we probably measure him at some point. Um, you know, there are certain jobs that will never go away. Um, Jobs, let me not say never go away. There are certain jobs that for the time being, people are going to need to do. Obviously, if you're working with your hands, that that cannot be replaced. Um, jobs that deal with physical, you know, safety of people, right? AI can assist Samuel Joseph in flying a plane, but it's not going to replace him, at least no time in the near future, right? The future will continue to belong to people who do things and people who can think, right? People who work in sales, the AI will assist them in creating sales campaigns, but it's not going to replace them overall. Okay. Um, let's move on to another example. If there's another example that you'd like to see, go ahead and put it in here, please. I, you know, I'm just showing you how powerful this can be. If I want, and I, you know, help this here. Let's switch to budgeting. I'm a student, again, living on student loans, and I have a limited income. Help me budget for meals, gasoline, and time. I'm here, but I'm not going to interrupt just yet. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
So while this is typing out here, can this tool create content like text to voice that can be used on IG and TikTok? Absolutely, absolutely. And there are more specific tools than ChatGPT that are designed for that sort of thing, right? So for um, you know, creating as said, creating videos or creating stories, creating content that is tailor made for Instagram and TikTok. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you go back to Futurepedia and you just search for TikTok and for Instagram and those things, it will absolutely pull things up that are purpose built for that. Uh, are there checks and balances to prevent AI to be used for nefarious activities? That's a great question. <sighs> No, that's the short answer. So one of the things that has been done is, uh, and, and again, talk about nefarious activities. A three second clip of someone's voice can be used to create anything that you want to with that person saying. So you can record Tom Cruise, right? There's, and you can have him say anything that you want to, right? Even stuff he doesn't agree to. And there's no check or balance that will stop. One of the more nefarious uses for AI has been somebody recording a child's voice, right? And then having that child call the parents or having that AI clone call the parents and say, mom, I've been kidnapped. I need you to send me $2,000 to get me out or whatnot. Again, criminals don't have the, the moral <laughs> barriers that we do, right, to doing things. And that has that has seen, you know, that has been increasing in, in you know, in, in recent times. And so what we tell people, you know, because people call, said, what do I do to prevent this from happening to me? Have a safe word with your kid, right? You know what that safe word is. And unfortunately, if your child were to be caught up with this scam, right, it, the child doesn't even know. Ask your child. What's the safe word? If it's just a recording, call your child, right? If so, if you get a call saying that your child's been kidnapped, pick up the phone and call your child. Don't immediately assume that what you're hearing on the phone, even though it's your child's voice, is true. And ask them for that safe word, right? If you're safe, use this word. If you're in trouble, use this word, right? Work it into a sentence. So that's just an example. It, that, that's just an example of, you know, the, the checks and balances are not there. Uh, and they will not be there until they start to affect people's pocketbooks, unfortunately. The one law that has been passed has been around AI and the creation of AI images. Because how do you teach a computer what art looks like? You have it sample millions and millions of pieces of art. And every time it produces a piece of art, it has to take from other pieces. So every once in a while, it will just pick a piece wholesale, right? It will take, say, for example, the Mona Lisa and make a very small change and say, this is original art, right? Now, the computer didn't do that on purpose. It just is sampling just as it's always been taught to do. And so recently passed was some copyright law that says, hey, if you are an AI artist, you cannot now copyright any AI art. So millions of pieces have been flooding the internet. You've all seen them, the Pope, you know, wearing Balenciaga and things of that nature. The law now states that we cannot copyright that art, but we can copyright a book that we put that art into. And so the law is going to continue to evolve. But around all of these other content generation algorithms and tools, there is no established case law to my knowledge. I'm happy to have an, an attorney speak up and, and, and let me know. But I do keep up with it because it's important for me to, to talk to my customers about. Uh, if we, someone so Tishoy, wants... Tishoy, say again? Tishoy, I wanted to see how to find vegan recipes for an ulcer diet. Sure. And then maybe I, I just had a, a couple things that your conversation um, made me want to touch on with you, but mm -hmm. we'll work through that example. That would be awesome. No, let, let's go ahead and create the diet. Yeah, as I, I do want this to be a little, you know, I, I love the interaction, right? So if you can hold your questions, let's go ahead and create the um, vegan diet. Uh, let's help me create vegan recipes or an ulcer diet. 
I haven't done this before. This is live, so let's see what it knows. Okay, so it knows what an ulcer diet is, and it says create foods that are gentle on the stomach and low in acid. And it produced a couple of recipes here. So lentil and vegetable soup, baked tofu with steamed vegetables, and it produces the ingredients for the recipe. And then an admonition, right? Listen to your body and adjust these recipes. So if you can now, you can now say, hey, create a shopping list for me. Okay, there's the shopping list. And as we saw before, you can ask it to, you know, list prices. You can go through and see, you know, say, okay, I already have these things. Um, let's say there's something you don't want, right? I don't like broccoli. Please, you know, keep broccoli. I don't like broccoli. Let's click here to go down. If you don't like broccoli, you can substitute it with these things. Tashoy, does that answer your question? Just go ahead and jump. You can. You don't even need to put your name. Was there anything else you wanted to to see uh, with this recipe generation? Again, you can see where we we, we can go through and generate pricing lists. Uh, we can, you know, pretty much do whatever we want to from here. But I want to make sure I'm answering your questions. Okay, good. Glad to hear it. Saba, cousin, you had a Listen. question. Mm -hmm. Yes. First of all, thank you so much. I just want to acknowledge that this kind of all came out of, there was a, a, a post a few weeks ago mm -hmm. about AI and, um, you know, Mervyn reached out to me and was like, I'd love to share what I know about AI with the weights. And so, listen, I love it. The more, the more of it, the, this is tremendous. I think it's timely. Um, and so I just want to acknowledge and thank you for taking the initiative and putting this together because um, we definitely are at different levels of understanding or quite frankly, just trying it out. I have tried it out a little bit in the past. I actually yesterday went and got like, hey, I want um, a workout routine based on you know building these muscles. And it gave me mm -hmm. like a really great, really thorough routine. Um, yep. But just a few things that, I wanted to just kind of re retouch on, which is one, uh, and, I, and then someone asked it, but it's true. It's like, this is in many ways, you know, the wild, wild west. This will not be regulated for a long time. Um, and so I have learned the most in terms of what it's capable of by mm -hmm. focusing on questions that are really in my expertise, just mm -hmm. to kind of get a sense of like how correct it is. So similar to how Mervin was looking at like an IT example, I would, uh, encourage everyone to kind of look at the data that it puts together within your realm of expertise, because I think that is how you'll get a better sense of like how great it is. Now, I'm sure any pastors who are watching that um, breakdown of a sermon were like, mm, <laughs> you know, because it's pretty basic, but, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. the that is, again, the best tool I have seen in terms of verifying roughly how accurate it is. Um, and I would say, you know, we don't have any children in the fellowship, but like this has tremendous benefit for people who are probably like mid-career, 10 years in, who know different things. Um, and it's going to be probably the most challenging for like younger people because they, to your point, will be, some of those jobs will be displaced by some of the things we know AI can do. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it could be a big differentiator for those of us who could do our jobs more efficiently. So I, I would definitely encourage folks who are like, oh, how can this help me do my job a little better? Mm -hmm. It'll be the most beneficial for us. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing, more maybe leaning into like, what are some opportunities for this to be a value add? I know sometimes there's like new technology come in, the questions are like, oh no, what, what are the jobs we're gonna lose? Like. How is this going to hurt? But it's like, what are some ways? I mean, in addition to what you've showed us, but like, I love to think about this as 
what are the opportunities for me, of course, professionally? What are the ways in which we can be contributing to the data that this will will pull from, right? Because I hear 50 to 70 years of data and I'm like, oh, that's a lot of racist data. Like, I don't, I don't know that that's yeah. the right baseline to mm -hmm. um, help us and or ensure that this intelligence is broad and, mm -hmm. and, and really um, valuable to not deter like us kind of further into these other weird patches of mm -hmm white supremacy that we kind of can't anticipate yet. So I don't know. I don't know if you had any more thoughts on like where people are investing and making money out of it or, you know, cause at the ground floor, that's always the right time to take a bigger share than kind of take a seat back and mm -hmm. maybe be a consumer of it as opposed to like a framer of it. No, no. Great, great question. So th there are two ways that people are monetizing uh, AI. Number one, is again, going to chat GPT and saying, act as a business consultant for me, right? I'd like to start a business doing this, catering to African-American consumers, right? Between the ages of 30 and 45 and doing these certain things. Help me to create a web strategy, help me to create a business plan. And what it does is that point is it, you know, especially for people earlier in their career or who are younger, and I'm glad you brought that up, it really helps accelerate and um, accelerate the, the pace of the increase of their, you know, their output. So even somebody young in their career, my son is two years out of Oakwood, right? And he's early on in his career. He can leverage GPT to combine, to compile market data. He can put together responses. The integration of AI tools within Outlook now means that his responses to emails can be, if he chooses to use it, can be much more polished, right? He can produce the analysis of documents much quicker than he was able to before. So education's never going to go away, but we need to learn, again, how to, 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 to synthesize data faster, and that's what this does, right? And it helps us to be more efficient and effective in those things. So that's one way. The second sort of more technical way that people are monetizing AI is simply using the framework within their applications. As I mentioned, here's Adobe, right? Adobe was very manual before. Here are the things I need to do. And now Adobe incorporated and licensed some of the AI tools. So they can say, here's a picture of Mervin. We can change the background. We can take his hat off in the picture. We can make him without glasses. So number one, it's really motivating and helping people move forward with the existing tasks, making them more efficient. And number two, using and leveraging the AI frameworks within uh, existing software platforms or even new ones, right? Some of these, you know, find songs like X, whatever. Some of them have paid uh, subscriptions where you can use them and, you know, you set up a, a system uh, where, you know, for $5 a month, it helps find new songs for you. Um, you know, just thinking off the top of my head, yeah. help me start a hair care business, right? For African-American women who are concerned with hair breakage and this and that, Pre present a business plan to help me market to people with different hair types. And ChatGPT will say, okay, okay. I can pull that together. And it, it helps accelerate you towards the stage of you actually starting a business. So yeah. I encourage you, right? throw things at it um, and, and and see what it comes out with. Yeah. I hope that addressed your question. No, I definitely, definitely did. I think the only other area and um, is, it's going to require us to have a lot higher sense of media literacy and discernment. I mean, mm -hmm. like a Holy Spirit level of discernment, just in terms mm -hmm. of, to your point, like what if your kids are in a situation and how these different, cause a lot of this stuff, because it's not going to be regulated from a, a nefarious mm -hmm. perspective, is it plays tricks on your eyes and your like your senses, you know, in, in some senses. So, I think, um, and you know, this is not to be frightful or anything like that, but it does require a recommitment to thoughtfulness um, and to really understanding what information is real, verifiable. That's the only thing I don't mm -hmm. love this format, which mm -hmm. is, I want to see references, mm -hmm. you know, like I, it's not like, a, in, at least with this, having grown up in the search era, 
Like I could choose, you might tell me there's a Fox article, but I don't trust Fox. I want to go for the maybe New York Times article to mm -hmm. pick my path to kind of getting to my answer. Mm -hmm. So that's my only prayer <laughs> in the new iterations of this, that it is more in it gives us as consumers a little bit more context as to the source. Um, the only other question I had, because I, I'm not always sure if these are interchangeable, mm -hmm. but I often hear machine learning as, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a cousin or if it's the same thing as AI. Could you maybe differentiate sure. what, if there is any differentiating? Yeah. So, so machine learning is essentially a way for determining if I give you a set of input conditions, here are the output conditions that make sense, right? The example I gave at the beginning was, let's say your Nest thermometer, right? Just say you have a thermostat in your home. The inputs are the, the weather outside, right? It's 84 degrees outside. It's 56% humidity inside. The inside th temperature is, you know, 67 degrees. It's 6 a.m. We notice that at 6.03 a.m. every morning, Mervin adjusts the temperature to such and such. Right. So the limited amount of machine learning within that platform allows it to say, here are the things that make sense. And here are some settings I can suggest for Mervin. Right. Oh, I notice he doesn't get up at, um, you know, he doesn't get up till seven on Sunday mornings. So we can adjust at seven. Right. It, again, it still has to be tempered with common sense. Right. So you don't just make those changes. I think that's where the ethical boundary gets crossed. In Colorado, they did make the changes on on people's homes, and they were highly upset, right? Because they were going through, they started importing data about power usage and said, for the community, we are, you know, we're noticing really high power usage. So we turned off everybody's AC, right, until 8 a.m., right? That's where you start crossing again into the artificial intelligence, right? The machine is learning. And now that data, that insight is moved over to artificial intelligence, which then takes data that it has never seen and makes insightful or tries to make insightful decisions about those things. Again, it has to be tempered as of now, right? It's not Skynet. But we, you know, we want, there are, there are controls in place to make sure we don't want to put AI in charge of your 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 pacemaker, for example, right? <laughs> oh my gosh! And, and I'm just saying, yeah. you know, these, these are things. I mean, these are active research projects, right? So we want to make sure that we we're reusing it intelligently, right? Machine learning very very limited. Here are the inputs. Here is a set of outputs. Choose between these, and then. Artificial intelligence is really just the volume means I'm going to ask you questions that you've never heard before, and you need to come up with answers for those. Thank you for that um, mm -hmm. distinction. Um, I don't know if anyone else had any other questions or if you had any closing comments, I'll drop off. But this is our first ever Tech Talk. I would love if there were more, if there's other um, topics that you're interested in that I could figure out how to source. I'm happy to do that. Um, but this is so critically important. And I think, especially as people of faith, we should be as uh, informed and um, able to do any and everything that's available to us. So thank you again, Mervin. I'm going to drop off mm -hmm. so you can say your closing thoughts. Mm -hmm. But uh, and thanks, everyone who's joined. Yeah, so just wanted to mirror that, Saba. Uh, thank you for everyone who's joined. Um, you know, people may have questions. I still have other material here that I was going to show. You know, I think uh, Pastor Darnisha had put together a VBS program. You know, there's so many things that can be done. So by all means, please reach out uh, if you have questions, if you have a class that you'd like to teach and you just need somebody to come in and talk for a few minutes. I'm happy to do that. I enjoy talking to young people and, and helping out. Um, reach out to me on Facebook. You know, if you need my personal contact information, we can work out a way to to do that. But I, I love to keep our people up to date on technology. It's what I do. It's what I've done. And thank you for taking your time. Your time is valuable. I really do appreciate it. And, you know, hope to talk to you all again. Have a great Sunday.